the first thing I did when I got the books, I went to the index and I said, okay, here are all the near-death experience researchers I've talked to. Are they in there? No, name after name after name, none of them are in there. You know, a couple of years ago, I interviewed Jan Holden from uh, the University of North Texas, who along with Bruce, Dr. Bruce Grayson from the University of Virginia, two of the most prominent names in near-death experience research, they compiled this book, The Handbook of Near-Death Experiences, mainly for people in the medical community so that when they encounter someone who comes up out of a cardiac arrest and said, hey, I had this incredible experience, they can be at least familiar with what to tell them. At the time they published this book, Michael, in 2009, they had over 100 peer-reviewed papers that they included in their book. By now, there's over 200 peer-reviewed papers. Okay, I, I don't see any of that in your book. I think it's important we make it, well, look, yeah, I don't have to cite everybody that's ever written on the subject. But you don't uh, cite any of them. You don't cite, I yes, mean, I do. oh, you yes, I Pin do. Von Lommel, Lommel, Sam Parnia, who else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You misrepresented both of them, but you, yeah, you at least cited them. But at any rate, uh, let, let's back up for a second. And, and, and um, this and idea. I, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, Evan Alexander, I want to talk about him, but technically he's not a near death experience researcher. He's a Harvard neurosurgeon that had a near death experience and wrote brain. a book about it, right? Yeah, that's right. But he knows a lot about it. He knows as much as you do, as much as I do, because he. But he uh, hasn't published peer reviewed papers on looking at the science. The peer reviewed paper thing is a, that's a red herring. I'm not denying that people have real experiences. You're, you're treating this as if the experiences represent some other dimension, a heaven, a place to go. And that is not at all what these uh, peer-reviewed papers indicate. All they say is that the people that have the experiences have very real experiences, which I agree. The experiences these people have are very real. People can get that from ayahuasca, from ecstasy, from deep meditation and so on. We know this. You can get it from brain stimulation. You can get it from oxygen deprivation. I, I, I mean, you think you seem to think it's something beyond that. Well, here's where I would focus on, is on the research, on the science. I don't think peer review is a red herring per se. I think when you look, it's the best means we have right now in science for policing science, finding out if people are doing good work. But again, what, 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 are you, well, what, what papers are you talking about? I'll, I'll get to that, okay? So I'd say you're not a doctor. So when we get into medical fields, I like to look at doctors. I like the near-death experience research from a guy named Jeff Long. Radiation oncologist, right? So this is a guy who works with death and dying patients all the time. He also happens to be a near-death experience researcher, compiled the largest database of near-death experiences, analyzed it scientifically with a scientific survey, and here's what he says. I'll pull that up for you right now. How do they sort through it? How do they know what research really holds up out there? The key thing is to know a few of the consistently seen elements of near-death experience that are the strongest evidence for their reality. 